okay guys now first let's talk about different types of helices and some very important parameters of helices and then we'll go to demonstrate the alpha helical structure which is uh, which is a part of secondary structure of three dimensional structure of proteins now if we look at this picture there are a lot of different types of helices uh, are being uh, described uh, illustrated in this picture now we start from here and uh, let's first talk about some of the parameters of helices now first thing i must talk about is the number of residues per turn now it is uh, as the name suggests this is really really easy so what now what is the number of residue that a uh, turn of helices contains in this picture as we can see here is one two three if we, if we think this black dots are the number of residues then you find one two three four five so is is the number of residue for this helix is five so we, we designate it with small a that means the number of residues per turn in this case which is 5 but in the second picture the number of residue is 1 2 3 4 so here is it is 4 in this picture this is 3 so it is 3 in this picture 2 and in this picture as we can see uh, so this is uh, again 1 2 3 but now it's an interesting fact to look at this uh, if we are we are having the number of residues is minus 3 that means that doesn't mean uh, we, we do not have any uh, number of residues uh, that means the negative sign and this place doesn't mean uh, we are not, not having anything it means the direction of the helix as we are looking at all these things this these all helices are right-handed but this helix in this case is a left-handed helix as we are looking at and uh, that's why it is designated with minus uh, sign okay now Now if we uh, look for another parameter which is called a pitch, what do we mean by helix pitch? Helix pitch means is the different or is the, uh, is the length between uh, the two turns, two successful turns is called a pitch. So as we look at this picture, in, the pre in this picture as it is contained uh, only one, one circular rotation, so no other, uh, no other helical uh, repeating unit is present there so there is no distance between the repeating units so pitch will be zero but in this picture as we are seeing uh, is that the, there are two uh, if we take uh, look at the two repeating units so here is the one repeating unit here is another repeating unit and the distance between these two repeating units is this pitch so pitch in this case we have uh, this this much of pitch so the length it is uh, not uh, the presence of amino acids and all this it is the difference between two successful turns so here is the pitch which is smaller but in this picture as we are looking at pitch is getting higher and this picture pitch is getting uh, slightly smaller and in this page it is also higher so this is uh, called the pitch so pitch will determine finally uh, so as we are looking at these pictures uh, we can see uh, the pitch uh, uh, where the pitch is really small so it is a very very stacked structure when the pitch is really higher then the structure is really 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 stretched out so if we stretch out an helix we have a higher uh, uh, pitch and we have a lower n and if we compress the helix we have a higher n value that means we have a higher uh, residues per turn but we have a lower pitch so this is a basic concept about uh, the alpha helices as we are looking at them now let us talk about here now let us talk about here now another thing I must talk about in this case is called the helix uh, rise okay so rise of the helix per repeating unit in this case as we are looking at uh, is the distance between uh, between one uh, amino acid to another as we are looking at so if we look at here so this is the placement of one amino acid in this case uh, so here is a unit then if, if this is the second unit of amino acid if we look the height increment for increment for the second amino acid from the first amino acid residue will be called the rise so these rise are simply uh, being uh, adjusted or been calculated by the formula d which is a uh, deno which is which denotes the uh, the rise or uh, helix rise equals to p by n so the pitch divided by number of residue so the distance between these residues or the height between these residues will be calculated we can find this kind of rise uh, a perfect order in case of dna or the double helix because you can see in those double helix how this uh, rise has been calculated because of the distance between two uh, two repeated 
repeated uh, nucleotide sequences and the same case in case of uh, proteins the distance between two repetitive amino acid sequences so in this picture as we see this is amino acid A this is the amino acid B as we are seeing these two amino acids are not reside in the same plane so in this amino acid is placed in this plane and this is placed slightly above the plane so the distance between these two planes it will be called the rise and how you measure this rise which is denoted with small d equals to the p that means the p uh, the, the pitch of this helices divided by the number of residues it it, it, it contains so you can ha have the rise okay so in turn if we have uh, this rise and we make uh, the uh, we, we multiply the rise with the number of residues we'll have the pitch the, the same thing is happening all these cases okay so now let us move on to alpha helices which is a part of the uh, secondary structure of a protein which we, we can find in very very abundant in nature so this alpha helis we will we'll start to talk about is a very very abundant secondary structure for a protein now what is called the secondary structure for a protein now very very Im uh, important thing about this is that when we are talking about the primary structure of protein we are talking about the simple backbone of a protein that means uh, that simple uh, in this picture as we can also see here so this is the alpha carbon so CR alpha cn and c alpha cn so this is all these things so the peptide bond linearly stretched out condition will be called the primary structure now whenever any kind of interaction takes place between uh, the moieties of this peptide backbone between the um, groups of the peptide backbone in this case which is we can see the groups of co and uh, the NH uh, group as we can see in this picture so any type of interaction when start to take place between the single stra single stretched out amino acid uh, backbone then uh, we call them the secondary structure in this picture we are looking at the alpha helix uh, or a secondary structure between or, or that means a structure which is formed due to the interaction between different uh, groups uh, if which are present in polypeptide chain uh, will finally lead to the production of helix we call it the alpha helical structure and and why it, uh, it, it is called uh, here the alpha helical structure because uh, sometimes it, it will be called the beta helix on different types of helix in this case but this in this case what we are looking at here is a picture so if we if we place if we draw the single linear uh, amino acid sequence when we see alpha c and, and this is the backbone so the backbone will form this kind of structure just because of one type of bond just because of one type of bond that bond uh, uh, hold the structure together like a glue hold the peptides together like a glue now in this case the bond is a hydrogen bond yet it is very very simple bond very very simple not very much strong no it is a very weak bond but still when thousands and thousands of uh, this uh, bonds are working together to hold the structure of polypeptide chain the chain becomes really really strong now in this case the the only orientation force for making this kind of helix is this hydrogen bond because the hydrogen bond uh, is being presented in this case between this alpha uh, be between this uh, uh, o of uh, the CO group that means the acidic group and uh, and H or hydrogen from the NH group so as we know we have a hydrogen attached to the N so the N terminal of an amino acid contains the NH group and that NH group can provide this hydrogen and the acidic terminal for, uh, for an amino acid will provide the CO group or, or, or this o oxygen and nitrogen oxygen and hydrogen uh, will form this hydrogen bond because for a hydrogen bond to be formed we need uh, the electronegativity uh, distribution or slightly electron charge distribution so in this case we have a slightly negative charge to the oxygen and we have a slightly positive charge to the uh, to this in, in this case is uh, the hydrogen and uh, in this case so here the driving force for making this alpha helices is uh, the formation of bond between uh, O and H. O is providing slight del negative and H is providing uh, the del positive. So uh, it's a distribution of electron and then finally hydrogen bond can be possible in this case. Now why they form this alpha helical structure instead of all other different types of structure? 
uh, that a very good question uh, indeed and in this case uh, the answer is uh, so they are not forming this kind of structure on their own this kind of structure is being formed because of the interaction between the the position of amino acid so for example there are a lot of different position as you can see this is the n1 uh, this is the n1 if we start from counting from here so is the n1 so is n2 this is n3 this is n4 so we can have different types of bonds this n can also pair hydrogen bond with this oxygen this hydrogen can also pair with this oxygen if it bends something like that but this is a bond not formed due to the bending of in such a way as a result of this kind of bond formation the structure is bended so the bond formation is the first priority and the second priority is the structure so the first thing so the cause is the hydrogen bonding and the effect is the structure so never think it in the opposite way that the structure is the cause and the bond formation is the second uh, or effect the cause is the hydrogen bonding and th the effect is just this kind of alpha helical structure and why they form alpha helix uh, this helical structure because of the position of the hydrogen uh, which is provided and the position of the oxygen which is provided is different so in this picture of alpha helix uh, it is i plus 4 that means if we start from here this is the i th or the start or starting point amino acid and th then we have start trouble to 1 2 3 and the fourth amino acid from this uh, starting point will make a bond with this uh, this previous amino acid and this type of hydrogen bonding of 1 to 1 plus 4 will lead to the formation of this alpha helices if we pr produce a bond which is start from 1 and the third residue will make a bond with that then that will also produce a, uh, the helix but that won't be an alpha helix the helical pitch and helical uh, number of residues will vary in the, that case now if it forms uh, the bond between 1 and 5th residue then it, that it will also produce a helix but that will not again uh, will be an alpha helix that will be something else again and the helix pitch and rise will be different for those so if we go on uh, at this below portion of here if we look at the structure this is the space filling model of alpha helix as you can see it will generally not uh, tell us so much about the structure so <laughs> let's go back to the schematic presentation again so if we are talking about here for example now this is a very good uh, example uh, very good ve very finely illustrated that we have starting point from here so this is the first uh, oxygen position uh, first oxygen of CO so is the oxygen of CO and it, it needs to form a bond bond with uh, this a H for, for, for this N then what happened it will produce a bond now in between these two bonds that you start point is here and this is the second point so we have only two amino acid residues so two residues one after another can form a bond it will also produce uh, uh, something but it will not produce helix because this kind of structure will call a ribbon structure now why it will call a ribbon structure then if this oxygen have, uh, have, uh, will pair with this uh, hydrogen to make a hydrogen bond and uh, make a structure then the structure won't be a helix because it is very very less uh, distance between these two amino acids to make a structure like helix to make a diameter like helix it will make a ribbon why because it is it will make a structure which is slightly twisted uh, from both angles that will call ribbon now the if this oxygen will pair with uh, this hydrogen at this residue uh, leaving three residues behind that will produce a bond that is produce a helix that helix will not be an alpha helix that will call the 310 helix because uh, because this is a nomenclature of different helical scheme now I'm start to know I'm start to tell you how, how this nomenclature is being done then in this case the first uh, thing as we are looking at here is uh, is uh, the number of residues that uh, that are involved in the bond now in this case what number of residues are involved residue 1 residue 2 and residue 3 so this third residue which are involving so three residues so start with 3 and n means the number of atoms which are involving so start from this uh, oxygen so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, so we are only count the backbone, the atom which are present in the backbone. We won't count other things uh, out in this case. Start from here, 1, 2, 3. But we'll, we'll count the start point and we'll count this end point. Okay start and end uh, mo atoms which are involving in the hydrogen bonds and we'll count the backbone not the other one so start from here uh, we start we cal calculate uh, count the co because this is providing uh, the the slightly negative chart so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and we have to count this hydrogen because remember this hydrogen is donating uh, for making the hydrogen bond so we have 10 residues so we have 10 in suffix and we have 3 uh, 
amino acid residues present. So we have 310 helix. Now in the similar way, if we look for the alpha helices, uh, so what will be uh, the, the name according to our designation, um, according, according to our naming nomenclature system. So let's begin again in for this alpha helices, though it has a name, sweet name of alpha helices, but still it will have a name like this 310 or 2. 27 ribbon. So in this case, if we look, start from 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have a 4 residues which are uh, planning to make this alpha helix. So we have a 4 uh, in position. Then what are the number of amino acid, uh, what is the number of atoms which are involved in this case? We can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So 13 residues. So what we coin called, uh, what will be the nomenclature for alpha helix in this case is 4 suffix 13. So this is how uh, we, we start to uh, name uh, these different helices and by looking at this name we can we can imagine what type of alpha helices is going to form. So this is the linear way how they will interact but as we know that if the alpha helix has to be formed uh, which is uh, due to the f uh, hydrogen bonding between the um, oxygen providing from the first residue and the hydrogen providing for the fourth residue cannot make a hydrogen bond from this long distances so they have to bend uh, with each other so they have to bend in such a way that they will form so what happens this uh, residue will start to bend and place this hydrogen very very close proximity to here and all these other residues will just bulge out uh, to make a, a circular nature of a diameter of this helix and as presenting this oxygen and hydrogen close to each other which will make the hydrogen bond. That's how the hydrogen bond is being made. So if you look at this, this kind of structures as we can see so uh, this is the 310 helix structure as we have talked about so as we look and this in this case we have a one two three so three residues making bonds and uh, and uh, we have uh, 10 uh, atoms which are involving to make these bonds in between those three residues which will make bonds so these are dotted lines that means uh, th the hydrogen bonds are talking about so as we can see uh, a very important point for this 310 helix that we can see these uh, hydrogen bonds in one plane and then the other plane then one plane then the other plane we cannot find this hydrogen bond uh, at the same side uh, two of the hydrogen bond at the same side now if we look at this alpha helix we'll find the two bonds in the same plane because it is arranged the amino acid in such a way to make bonds so this this kind of arrangement has been chosen for the conformational stability for the lowering down the steric hindrance and as well uh, and, and also the, the very very uh, favorable or comfortable nature of making these hydrogen bonds. So actual goal to make these hydrogen bonds and to make those hydrogen bonds uh, we have to arrange those amino acids in, in, in proper alignment. So the priority is to make the hydrogen bonds and to satisfy that priority we have to place our amino acid sequences in various ways. That's what is going on in all these cases. To make these hydrogen bonds, uh, these amino acids are being placed and this placing of this amino acid and the hydrogen bond uh, of, uh, of uh, between uh, the different residues of amino acid will start to generate the helix like alpha helix in some case, sometimes 310 helix, sometimes phi, pi helix which is much more uh, much more uh, better uh, higher in the diameter okay so that's how uh, this all things has been done so this is a very important uh, structure very important secondary structure for amino acid because this is a interaction a milder interaction between amino acid sequences to make bonds and we can find this alpha helices more in mo mostly in, in the cell membrane or membrane proteins because this mem and you, you, this alpha helices are important to make the multiple pass or channel proteins in cell membrane which are embedded in the cell membrane uh, to transport in different transport different molecules for different uh, time and uh, uh, this alpha helix we can also find this alpha helix in globular protein in some cases but mostly we find this alpha helixes in making the membrane proteins and these are really important because the alpha helix uh, and, and and another important thing is that the, the, the most of the part of this alpha helix can also made up with uh, whether amino acid sequences uh, that are hydrophobic in nature sometimes sometimes hydrophilic in nature if they are made up made by the amino acids which are having the hydrophobic uh, uh, R groups then in those alpha helix are being embedded or found to be embedded in, in in the cell membrane to make a cell membrane proteins because as we know cell membrane is made up with the phospholipid layers a phospholipid bilayer so lipid is hydrophobic in nature so in those cases we need hydrophobic molecules to engage with uh, the lipid molecules of cell membrane and if they are made up with the 
polar uh, residues of amino acid then we can probably find this kind of alpha helical structure in the globular proteins which which can make the soluble protein structure so that's all and i hope that's going to help you thank you